I'm Aceid, and this is episode 5 of World Building Wednesdays, a series where I waffle on about some of my fictional worlds over a time lapse of myself filling in some artwork. These are two members of the Dwarven Inquisition, or on Ifig Fisru, the enforcement wing of the Dwarven Church in the Connacht Disaster Zone series. This is a dark historical fantasy series that I'm working on that is heavily inspired by the Stalker games and is set near where I live in Ireland. If you're coming from my recent Hearts of Iron 4 playthroughs, I've actually used the game as some partial inspiration for the series as well, just from playing around with some of the potential alternative history settings. And when I'm playing as Ireland, I sometimes name the spy agency Anifig Fisru. It's Irish for the Office of Inquiry. Anyway, the backstory of the series is that during the Iron Age, the people of Western Ireland started digging into the granite and quartzite hills of the mountains out here. They adapted to the surroundings to some extent, and they built themselves a civilization. But sometime in the mid 19th century, instead of the potato famine, something goes wrong and causes reality to resemble a very buggy video game. Most of the dwarven cities in Connemara were either evacuated or sealed off as monsters came through from a different world and the dwarves who were left behind mutated into orcs, or Fomorians. The dwarven church, based around a regional form of Celtic Christianity, ended up with a lot of power and influence over what's left of dwarven society. Probably too much. Part of the reason for this is that they don't use Latin at all, and haven't since the 16th century. Well over 90% of dwarven education is provided by church-run schools, Compare that with modern Ireland, where about 80% of primary schools are run by the Catholic Church. That's a massive amount of leverage. One major difference between the Dwarves and the Catholic Church is that Dwarven clergy are allowed to marry, and this includes monks and nuns. That was the case all the way back to the 9th century, and remains a major point of contention with the Vatican. However, civil marriages are banned as is divorce, though annulment is permitted. This series has been set in the early 20th century, non-heterosexual relationships are forbidden. The dwarves go further by considering childbirth to be a civic duty and tend to get pushy about it. Most healthcare is provided by the church as well, and inquisitors like these are often attached to dwarven militia units as medics and police units. If you want more detail on the dwarven infantry, check out the video I have on that. As police enforcers, they have a fair amount of power under the guise of moral enforcement. A lot of this means following up on reports of laxitude insufficient attendance at mass, romantic or sexual relationships outside marriage, blasphemy. You know, all the things a theocratic society would frown upon. And a lot of these reported incidents are either made up or misheard. They often run into jurisdictional issues with other law enforcement, especially with the private security forces of the Color Trading Company. CTC in particular, being a pre-World War I equivalent of the East India Company, or any cyberpunk megacorp, regard them as a business obstruction that's just too powerful to do away with. And thus, the major balance of power in dwarven society is between CTC and the church. By the time most of the stories are set, in the 1910s and 1920s, the Inquisition's remit has expanded to investigating reports of Fomorian sympathisers. Historically, this meant anyone who wasn't sufficiently dedicated to removing the orcs from Connemara. Since the Crow Island Affair in 1917, where a couple of teenagers were deliberately exposed to a potential source of the orcs mutations, and thus confirmed it, the official position has been slowly moderating. As is usually the case when society changes, some don't think it's changing quickly enough, while some hardliners are against any form of moderation here. The fact that some Fomorians, under the banner of the Fomorian Brotherhood, consider it to be a duty to turn people into orcs does not help matters. Just about everyone else agrees that this is not a good thing, even many Fomorians.
that is going to be it for this video. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Slong a foil.